Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year's. First video of 2021. This series today is going to be on investing. Many millennials are into investments, whether it's option trades, currencies, stocks, mutual funds. It's amazing. However, I'm starting to realize everybody is jumping straight into investing and not understanding what they're doing, the risk to it, because let me be honest, investment equal risk. No matter what investments you do, there's always a risk. So let's get started. How to invest the proper way. The first step into investing is to set up a savings and an emergency fund. Yes, you heard me correctly. Now, this is part of any good financial plan, but people do not tell you this. It's a reliable source of money when you need it so you don't have to fall back on credit cards and loans. And think of it this way, something bad happens to you. A car accident, car breaks down, um, you need money because, I don't know, whatever situation you're in, you don't want to rely on a credit card for it because as we know in my previous videos on credit cards, whatever you spend you have to pay back within a time period and if not, interest will be added and etc. Same thing as loans, when you borrow money from someone or from the bank, they charge you interest. But if you have a fund that's just for emergencies, you can just pull it out whenever, no fees, nothing. The point is, the money is there when you need it, even when you do a bad investment. So there's a reason why I say to have both. An emergency fund is a fund where you need it when you're in an emergency. And a savings is just a safety net, just right there. Or a bad investment happens. So let me demonstrate how we set up an emergency fund. First thing you do is go on Google and type in high yield savings account. As you can see, a whole bunch of banks pop up. However, I'm just going to hit the first two, which is American Express and Citibank. So once I click on American Express, I see that 0.50% APY. That's eh, it's okay. It's under one, but let's continue. They offer no minimum fees, which is great. And as you continue to scroll down, they'll give you an estimate on how much interest you can earn depending on your initial deposit, the time, and how much you put in a month. So on Citibank, I noticed that it says money market account, which is different from a high yield savings. Let's go to savings builder. Uh, and here's what I don't like up to 0.45%. So it's not 45%. And here I thought of Chase. So let's start comparing their savings. So the first thing that came to my attention that I don't like is that there's a monthly service fee. However, it says you can waive the fee. So let's see what the requirement is for that. Okay, I'm not really feeling it, but let's see how much interest you can earn. So you have to enter your zip code apparently and determines how much interest because it, it varies by location. I just put in a Long Island zip code and it says 0.01%, which is basically nothing. So in my case, I wouldn't say do Chase. And their premier savings is still the same, 0.01. So Chase is out of the question. Let's try MCU. So I googled MCU high yield savings account and clicked on a link. MCU, it's very low as well, 0.15%. So that's out of the question too. Now I'm going to search discover. And when I clicked on discover, I noticed that it's 0.45% APY, which is not bad. 5% less than American Express. In order to open an American Express, it's very simple. Just click open an account and open a new account because we don't have a saved application. Here are the requirements. And if you qualify, if you check off all three, then click continue, open a new account and enter all your information. So one, two, three process. Now for Discover, I like that it compares the API to other banks. And as you can see, Discover has a higher percentage and there's no monthly maintenance fee, which is great. And to open up a savings account with them is simple. You click open an account. Now, if you're new to Discover, you click new to Discover. And if you already have a Discover account, you click the other one and enter your basic information. That's simple. That's how you can set up and prepare for your emergency fund account. 
Now the point is, before you do anything, you need to set a target. So let's start off with the emergency fund. I always say, calculate how much you usually pay a month towards bills and utilities. So if you have a car payment, a car loan, mortgage, Con Edison bill, gas bill, calculate it for the next six months. Let's say you up in New York where I'm from, that's estimate, mm, let's say $1,000 a month. You wanna have an emergency fund that you can survive six months on without any additional income. So if you pay a thousand dollars a month towards bills, utilities, and etc., you need to save six thousand dollars. You need to have an emergency fund of six thousand dollars. Let's say you lose your job or an investment went bad. You need to survive until you can get yourself back up to becoming financially stable again. That's what the emergency fund is for, and you're not supposed to touch it unless it's an emergency. And here are the pointers for an emergency fund. All you gotta do is hit the max. Once you reach the 6,000, that's it. Don't put no more money into it because putting too much money sitting in the bank not doing nothing, you're devaluing it. Inflation's gonna happen. You're gonna, you're basically losing money. Now with saving, I always say target is whatever. Let's say you wanna buy a house, buy a car, or you just wanna have, you know, a savings just in case you wanna just go on a shopping spree or traveling. So there's different types of savings accounts you can acquire. There is money market, certificate deposit, holiday club, dream plan account. So let me get into details of each type of account. So for the money market account, it's similar to a high yield savings account. The difference is it comes with a debit card and a check writing capability, making it more convenient, especially in a pinch. Now, one of the major difference is with a money market account, it generally requires a large minimum deposit to open an account. Going back to when you open up a high yield savings account, you only need minimum $5 deposit or so. But with a money market, depending on the bank, Sometimes require a minimum 500 deposit down, 1,000, 2,000, it varies. Now, a certificate of deposit, also known as a CD, requires to keep money in your account for a specific period of time. It can be as short as one month to as long as five plus years. Keep in mind, the longer your term, the higher your interest will be. So a holiday club account, also known as a holiday fund, is a different type of savings account. It's when people make routine deposits throughout the year and the accumulated savings are withdrawn near the holiday. So a holiday fund are basically, you know, funds where you save up for the holidays, you know, in America, mostly in America, you end up spending a lot during Black Friday and Christmas and you want to make sure you have money. So they have certain accounts for that, which is really great. Lastly, we have the dream plan account. The dream plan account is basically where you put money aside for the dream you want. And whether it's buying a house, a car, banks such as American Airlines or for things like this, which is really cool. So as you can see, this is the first steps, investments within yourself and investing your money. Emergency fund savings account. I'm telling you, you need to have this, these two, before you do any other type of investment. And you can put $50 a month, $5 a week. There's no rush on setting that goal. But I advise you to not do any other investments until you have that set up, or at least 50%. Let's say it's gonna take a while for you to get ever your bills will cost for the next six months. Once you hit 50%, then start doing some investments. And that's where part two comes in on what to do next. See you guys in part two. Bye, everybody.